Hi, so my name is Vincent. I'm based in Montreal, Canada. I work for Tutulid as an Office 365 and Azure developer. And uh, I'm also an Office Servers and Services MVP for three years now. And yeah, I've been working uh, on SharePoint for a couple of years now. So I started working on SharePoint uh, 10 years ago, I would say. Um, first as an IT pro, actually. And the, f the biggest thing I liked about SharePoint is to understand properly SharePoint, you have to do both, uh, IT Pro and Developer. So this is why I also had some developer background back, way back then in PHP, and this is why I like SharePoint. Uh, so I started learning .NET and SharePoint development, and I got into there. And well, basically I'm still there 10 years after, so yeah, this is my background. So I don't know how many hours I spent on the SharePoint framework. I would say like they announced that to us um, more than a year ago at the MVP Summit. I was looking into that here and there, and then I was playing with it and trying to understand what was the technology and how it was working. And so pff, I would say a couple of months at least and a few uh, dozens of hours at least. But the great thing about, with the SharePoint framework is it's based on modern web technologies. So if you know Webpack, Gulp, and TypeScript, and so on and so forth, you already know some of the stuff, right? And I already had experience on those things before playing with the SharePoint framework. Um, I, th I think it's a great effort from Microsoft at large to uh, transition a very old product, if you take it in uh, uh, IT uh, terms and uh, IT years, right, uh, into the modern web development and so on and so forth. And also into open source, and it has been a tremendous change. Um, I think it's a great promise, or like, we're like the goal is noble and we still have a long way to get there though uh, we only have a web parts for now and last week they announced the uh, uh, common extensions and so on and so forth and they are adding little by little but we still have a very long way to go I like the roadmap because it captures a lot of things we've been asking for many years into the SharePoint space. Um, for example, when you think about ALM and DevOps processes, which I've been talking about quite a few times now in the past, in the SharePoint space, I mean, um, I like the fact that they finally understood that we need that stuff. We need APIs, we need tooling, we need proper uh, documentation around it, and they are working on providing it. I might be a little bit impatient. I would have liked to have seen that before, uh, maybe around the add-ins, uh, adventure, and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I like the roadmap and also access to the graph and I have a bunch of other things that uh, make a lot of sense in today's uh, environment and development patterns. Um, I, I think the, the greatest change we made so far compared to the other development models is enable linked unit tests first. So whenever you create a new SharePoint framework project, right, a new SharePoint framework work part, day one, you get unit test support, which we never had in SharePoint and which was super costly. And so we never did it, to be honest, right? And I think it's going to be a great, a great addition to, the, to our tooling methodologies and so on and so forth to make sure we ship quality over quantity or whatsoever we were used to do. It's a tough question. I would add many things. Uh, the first one would be probably uh, stuff around the provisioning. Um, with the um, uh, full trust solutions, add-ins and so on and so forth, uh, historically we've always have been able to provision stuff, lists and whatever you name it, right? Um, and we don't have that in SharePoint Framework, which is kind of uh, uh, a bit confusing. Of course, there is the PNP provisioning initiative, but uh, so far I haven't seen any announcement or any information about it, and I would like to have that. I also would like to have stuff around the graph, around ALM and so on and so forth, but maybe I'm impatient. So. Um, the one thing I would change is probably the way uh, they interact with the community. Um, I, I get the fact that you have two things coming into play uh, into the SharePoint framework, right? You have a share, the SharePoint server bits that are part of a product and it's Microsoft code and they have to keep it on their end, right? But then you have the SharePoint framework bits that are supposed to be open source and they are based on open source tools. So I would like to have seen way earlier the source code of a framework open source so we could help them moving forward and getting faster and I think right now they, they are not like benefiting that and it's lacking in the framework itself. 
So from a SharePoint developer's perspective, I think the biggest challenge around the SharePoint framework is to transition from server-side technologies, uh, non-open source uh, uh, stack and, and back-end development to uh, something which is more open source, something which is um, uh, totally different from what we were used to. So the learning curve for SharePoint developers is big. But that comes also with another perk is I will be able to talk with my other open source developers friends and they will be able to be involved in what I'm doing. So, so I think it's a kind of a trade-off, right? But it's hard for former SharePoint developers to transition to, to that so far. So my personal thoughts around that is um, I think, and we have started that transition a couple of years ago. We, st we started saying that SharePoint was more and more a service and less and less of a platform, right? Uh, a couple of years ago, and we, we kind of kept that message going on over the years, right? And also when you take into account Microsoft Teams as a platform, um, to me it would make sense somehow that the work we're doing on the framework and on SharePoint and the work which is done in Teams should connect at some point and be almost the same thing, right? If you take aside branding and so on and so forth, what you want to support is you want to enable users to do stuff and everything is going to be in Teams. So not only SharePoint but Planner, uh, Notes uh, and so on. And if you want to enable users, the more services you can leverage out of the box and the more content you can provide out of the box, the better it's gonna be. So my guess would be SharePoint is going to be the API and Teams is going to be the integration platform. So that's my personal guess. If I had an advice, it would be probably for Microsoft to provide guidance around uh, full trust solutions, add-ins, frameworks, and also the future around that because a lot of people are asking a lot of questions around it and they don't know uh, what they can leverage at what point on time m now, but what they will be uh, able to leverage in the future and how they should transition for different scenarios, this scenario and that scenario. Um, also having some kind of support for the backend services into the framework would be good. Maybe include a Docker template or an ARM template for Azure, whatever it is, right? So we could provision stuff to do batch jobs, uh, to do queuing and uh, heavy lift and shift on the backend. It would be awesome to have that in the framework as well.